this is how much it worth. Net book value is the current value. It worth this much, but you sold 1,000. So it's obviously a loss, 260. Yes, guys, it's a loss. So loss, where should loss be recorded at, guys? Expenses or income. So later on, please remember, don't forget to record this in your expenses. Okay, guys? Okay, now we are done with this. We still have to find depreciation for the year. So you guys can see this question, you have to spend so long on doing it. Okay, it's quite tough, right? Okay, now the next thing you have to find depreciation for the year. So how to find depreciation for the year? Okay, first, originally, how much office equipment do you have? Go to, up to the question there. You guys can see, originally, your office equipment is 60,000, isn't it? Okay, so now my thing is that depreciation for the year, I must take the remaining equipment times 15%. How to find the remaining equipment? Very easy. Originally, you have 60,000, right? In your office equipment. Okay, you sold one of them. How much is it? The one you sold, the original, it's 1,008. So by doing this, you can find out how much is the depreciation for the year and you'll be getting 8730. Okay, so I have my depreciation for the year. This one will be in my expenses as well. Okay, and the last, any questions from here? So depreciation for the year, just take the remaining one times 15%. Is everyone okay? Okay, if no, if everybody is okay, then we'll move on to the last information. Okay, the last information is very easy. They say one of the clients has uh, was bankrupt. So the client 01885 and they say does not expect to recover this amount. So I know this 1885 is known as bad debts, but nowadays they don't really call it bad debts anymore. They call it the irrecoverable debts. Okay, they call it the irrecoverable debts. So this one is also your expenses later on. Okay, so guys, I already done with the additional information. So after that, you can do your own expenses. Huh? I'm sure you guys can do it, right? So how many expenses are there? Just let you know, lah, okay? So how many expenses in this question? Okay, we have salary, we have rent and rates, stationery, electricity, bank charges, the depreciation here, expenses, expenses, and what else? And the irrecoverable debts is also expenses. So um, total is actually, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, seven expenses. Lah. Okay, I think you guys will know where is it. Lah. Okay, so that's all for this one. The income statement, you guys can do it yourself. Okay, uh, for the income statement, right? here's a quick tip for you guys. Okay, but this question, they have no interest. If this question have interest, right? How you guys should do it. Okay, now if you, uh, the recent syllabus, like they changed a little bit already, like, okay? So if you notice that you have interest as an expenses, what are you going to do? What you're going to do is that you're going to take your, okay, first, let's say you have gross profit and then you're going to less all your expenses, ma, okay? Blah, 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 all your expenses, okay? Then when I say all expenses is without the interest first, okay? The interest we cannot record as part of the expenses. So what you're going to do, do is okay, you take all the gross profit and minus the, all the expenses, you will get this thing called profit of what? What is this thing called? Before profit for the year, no, it's not profit for the year. Profit for operations. You guys learned that before? Yes, profit from operation, very good. So now the format is a bit different. After you find out profit from operation, then you guys only less, sorry, interest. When I say interest, it can be loan interest or whatever interest, okay? Less interest, then only finally you look for your profit for the year. Okay, guys, please don't misunderstood this question. The one I'm telling you guys now is not applying on this question. It's just that in case if tomorrow there's an income statement question, there's an interest, please do like this, okay? Less all the expenses. Just make sure you're going to do profit twice. The first profit you will find is profit from operation. The second one is profit for the year. Okay, cool. All right, now moving on to the next one. Okay, SOFP is so good. They only ask you to prepare for the um, asset section. Okay, I only will tell you the tough part about this. Right? Okay, so we know as usual, we have non-current asset on office equipment. No matter sole trader or limited company. Uh, yes, no matter what type of business, if let's say limited company, there's a debenture interest. Okay, if there's a debenture interest, loan interest or whatever interest, uh, please do like this, okay? Profit from operation, less interest, profit for the year. 
Okay, now moving on to the next one. Okay, why I want to show you guys this left? Because students will make mistake on the accumulated depreciation. And then, okay, this is how you do math. Cost, accumulated depreciation, and net book value. Okay, what is the cost now? Very easy. Just now, the remaining equipment. How much is the remaining equipment? Just now we know. Originally, oopsie. Okay, originally, you have 60,000. You sold one of them, right? So your cost will be the remaining one, 60,000 minus 1,800, which is going to be uh, 58200. Okay, now the tough part is the accumulated depreciation only. Okay, please don't forget about the depreciation from last year. Okay, so how to find accumulated depreciation? This is what you're going to do. You're going to take the beginning one. Yo, what am I writing? Beginning depreciation means it's the last year one. Okay, you're going to take the last year depreciation. Okay. And minus the if I calculate inside a bracket beside non-current asset, can can also, yeah, can. Uh, but beside non-current asset, it's very hard for them to know whether it's for cost or not. Okay, because we have three columns here. Okay, we have three columns here. So it's very hard for them to know whether it's for cost or accumulated depreciation or net book value. Right, so for this one, you can show, okay, if you guys want to show it, the working also can. Okay, so beginning depreciation minus the depreciation for the disposal. Okay, please remember because you sell this non-current assets already. So the depreciation for this non-current asset can no longer be inside the, be part of your depreciation. Just, okay, let me tell you guys one more thing. Okay, so do you guys remember just now when we're doing the accumulated de depreciation for the one we dispose, right? We know it's 540, okay. So this 540, right? It was inside here already. Okay, you guys can see, what is this? What is this 22500? This 22500, right, is actually the depreciation from last year. Okay, please take note. This 22500 is the depreciation in the beginning. It's a depreciation from last year. So you guys must know, when you sell a non-current asset, the depreciation, okay, the depreciation for the non-current asset, right, okay, cannot be inside this 22500 anymore. So please remember, if you want to find out the accumulated depreciation this year, you must take the beginning minus the depreciation for the disposal one and only you add the one you just found this year. So how much is it? The beginning is 22500. The one you dispose is 540. The one we found is 8730. Okay, don't ask me where you get this. Huh? All this I calculate already just now, right here, okay? Right, then after that, you after you plus and minus all that, right, that is your accumulated depreciation for this year. Okay. All right, so it's pretty easy. Okay, and one more thing, okay, for your current asset, there's one more thing to remind you. Okay, do you guys remember that, okay, in this question, it's very simple. Current asset, we only have trade receivables and the other receivable. Okay, trade receivable, right, you guys remember there's one bad debts right just now do you guys remember there's an irrecoverable debt just now so please remember if you have a bad debt you must show okay what is the trade receivable originally one five six zero zero okay and you must minus the bad debts one eight eight five okay you can show that and then only this will become this is your final trade receivable and other receivable don't forget just now the first part we, we already work it out the prepaid rent isn't it so just like that and you can total everything up you will get your total assets okay for this one they only want you to show the total assets that's all can okay right i will move on already okay so so there's two possible reasons why zami require a bank or a draft why you want to borrow from a bank is normally because you need to pay your short-term debts or if there's no disposal you just add the beginning depreciation and depreciation this year yes correct so guys if there's no disposal right you just take the beginning one to add the this year one that's all okay right so why you want to bank overdraft land because you want to pay for your short-term debts maybe okay because you have a lot of trade payables maybe you want to pay your short-term debts okay or maybe you don't have enough money you want to improve your cash flow Okay, or the reason can also be cause that you need to pay your expenses as well. Okay, because you don't have enough money. Okay, so that's all.
Now the next one. Okay, guys, I just want to give you guys a quick tip. So every time if they give you advice, right, how to get five marks, right? Okay, recently they really like to ask questions like this to advise things, right? So you must understand, right, for this five marks, right, okay? So there's two, they say uh, justify your answer with two advantage of each course of action, okay? So how are you going to write? So there are two things, but increase salary and invite him to become a partner. So this one, you must write two advantage. This one, you must write two advantage. But if you write like that, only four marks, how to get the last one mark? Any idea? If you want to get five marks, how are you going? What are you going to do? So you must give your recommendation. Very good. Okay, so get recommendation. So recommendation, right, must be, you must say, okay, which one is better and why? Okay, so you must recommend which one you agree or which one you think is better for Sharif to choose and then you say why. So that means like if you want to choose increase in salary. So before this, you say, oh, uh, if increase in salary is good because it will motivate, uh, it will motivate the Sharif, okay? And then uh, at the same time, no one will share profit with you because you're, he's still a, she's still an employee to you. Then you must give a recommendation. Let's say you decided that salary increase is better. So you must write down an other advantage why you think it's you want to choose this. Okay? So recommendation is like that. So this is five marks. Now. So don't think that you must fill up the whole passage, right? Even though your answer is short. So in accounting, right? It's not like essay, you know? As long as you mention the key point, let's say you say, oh, uh, increased salary is good because it motivates. Okay, increase the motivation. Okay, and another one you might be thinking, okay, they will be like, uh, not a partner, right? So, no need to share profit. Okay, because, okay, no need to share profit. So, there's like two advantage already for the salary. Then the recommendation, you say that, oh, increase in salary is better. Okay, why is it better? You can say that, okay, no disagreement will occur lah, because he's not a partner, man. it's just an employee. No disagreement occur. So, this is how you guys are going to do it, okay? So please don't skip theory questions. At least try. Can you guys at least try? Yeah.